again and welcome to this second video in the series, short series looking at the, uh, the letter to the Hebrews. In the first video we saw how the, the claim of the writer of this letter, the claim that the Levitical priesthood had been changed uh, and the priesthood had been changed and the Levitical priesthood had been done away with is blatantly false according to several statements from the very words of Yah himself from the very mouth of the Most High himself now th this video we're going to be looking at uh, the claims made in Hebrews about the uh, effectiveness of Torah now so in chapter 7 again uh, after, just after he, uh, he he makes the claim that the Levitical the priesthood has been changed, he says this. He says, uh, "Okay, let's start in verse 14. It is perfectly clear that our master arose from Yehuda, a tribe about which Moshe spoke, n never spoke concerning priesthood. And this is clearer still if another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek." who has become not according to the Torah of fleshly command, but according to the power of an endless life. Uh, for he does witness, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now here's a verse I want to focus on. For there is indeed a setting aside of the former command because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the Torah perfected nothing but the bringing in of a better expectation through which we draw near to Elohim. So, uh, the writer to the Hebrews said that the uh, the former command, in in context, he's speaking about the the, the Levitical priesthood, the the command, the Levitical commands, uh, were set aside. In if we look at another version, we get a, a much more direct translation. ESV says, for on one hand, a former commandment is set aside because of its weakness and uselessness, for the law made nothing perfect. Now he makes a, so the law made nothing perfect, the Torah made nothing or no one perfect apparently. He says the same thing in chapter 10, uh, it says the Torah having a shadow of the good to come and not the image of itself was never able to make perfect those who draw near with the same sa same slaughter offerings which they offer continually year by year okay so this is uh, this is Pauline teaching this is very this is could be straight from the word mouth of Paul because Paul had a similar uh, belief he said in Romans chapter chapter seven and eight, when he's arguing how the Torah was unable to to stop him from sinning, he says this in verse three, chapter eight: "For the Torah, being powerless in that it was weak through the flesh, Elohim, having sent His own Son in the likeness of the, of in the likeness of flesh of sin, and concerning sin, condemned sin in the flesh." So it's this idea that the Torah was powerless, or as the uh, the writer to the Hebrews. That the letter of the Hebrews puts it, it was uh, weak, weak and useless, and it was unable to make anybody perfect. Okay, so is that belief uh, justifiable from the scriptures? Well, obviously, you know the answer to that is, of course not. The, the attitude of the Torah itself and the Tanakh, the, the Hebrew prophets, to the Torah is that the Torah was and is perfect. We can go to Psalm 1 to begin with, one of my favorite Psalms. Blessed is the man who shall not walk in the counsel of the wrong and shall not stand in the path of sinners and shall not sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the Torah of Yah and he meditates in his Torah day and night. What will be this man like who, who delights in the Torah and meditates on Torah? He shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Does this sound like a man who is incomplete? Does this sound like a man who is, you know, lacking anything? No. The man who delights in the Torah and walks in Torah shall be blessed in everything that he does. This, just quickly going back to, uh, uh, if you go to Jacob, the, uh, the Apostle Jacob, 
he says, he that looks into the perfect Torah, that of freedom, and continues in it, not becoming a hearer that forgets, but a doer of the work, this one shall be blessed in his doing. It's the same idea, that the ones who delight in Torah, the ones who rejoice in Torah, the ones who do Torah, they shall be blessed in everything that they do. Okay, but the, but the, the writer of the Hebrew says that the Torah was weak and, un, and, and useless. But James, Jacob, says the Torah is perfect. Who are you going to believe? Let's go back to the Psalms and let's go to Psalm 19. Remember, we're, we're trying to see if it's true that the Torah was weak and useless and unable to make anybody perfect. Well, let's have a look. Psalm 19, verse 7. The Torah of Yah is weak and useless. Or, the Torah of Yah is perfect. That's what it says. Bringing back, the, bringing back the being of the soul. The witness of Yah is trustworthy, making wise the simple. The orders of Yah are straight, rejoicing the heart. The command of Yah is clear, enlightening the eyes. Look at what the, the Torah does. The fear of Yah is clean, standing forever. The right rulings of Yah are true. They are righteous altogether. More desirable than gold, than, f than much fine fine gold and sweeter than honey and the honeycomb also your servant is warned by them in guarding them there is great reward again the psalmist Dawid in this case he knew he understood the the power and the the perfection of the Torah he says the the Torah of Yah is perfect and then he extols the virtues of Torah all the things which which uh, the Torah could do and this is a man who is after who was after Yah's heart, okay? This is not a man who was some unspiritual, you know, worldly, carnal man. This is, a, this is one of the most righteous men that's ever walked the earth, okay? So, again, who are you going to go with? You're going to go with Dawid, who says the Torah was perfect and is able to do all these things, or you're going to go with the writer of Hebrews, who says that the Torah was uh, weak and useless and unable to make anybody perfect, complete. Let's have a look at some, some statements from Psalm 119, Psalm 119. Uh, if we go to Psalm 119, verse 93. Let me never forget your orders, that is your commandments, for by them you have given me life. Okay, the Torah, the commandments of Yah, can give life to those who, who abide in them, who, who rejoice in them, who keep them. That doesn't sound like a, a useless Torah to me. Again, we can go to uh, Psalm, the same Psalm, verse 104. From your orders I get understanding, therefore I have hated every false way. And he carries on. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Okay, this is not a weak and useless Torah that we're talking about here. This is a Torah. This is these are the commandments of Yah, which are able to give us understanding and to be a light and lamp to our feet to guide our, our way. Uh, verse one hundred and sixty-five. Finally, great peace have those loving your Torah. For them there is no stumbling block. Okay, and of course we could go on and on and on and on you know from through the Torah itself and through the prophets to show that the Torah is perfect the Torah is complete and the Torah is able to bring life to those who who walk in it and and to and to guide us and to keep us away from evil to keep us away from sin uh, and uh, and so on and so forth so returning again back to uh, Hebrews Hebrews the, the the letter to the Hebrews says that the former command was uh, weak and useless and he said that the Torah made nothing or nobody perfect okay once again who are you gonna go with you're gonna go with uh, the the prophets that we've just read or you're gonna go with whoever wrote the book of Hebrews 